Okay, well, I'm going to take a quick look at one of my friend's stories, which is called Wintermelon. It's a children's book, and I'm curious to dig in. I already did a first uh, look at an earlier draft, so it's going to be a second look at the draft, and excited to see what's changed, what's improved, and uh, where to go from there. So, a Wintermelon story. Popo is grandmother. One summer, Sammy stays with Popo at her home in Minnesota. Sammy loves to spend time with Popo. I would almost say Sammy's. Oops, is it not editing? I should put it on suggesting. Popo is Sammy's grandmother. So I think it's good focusing on Sammy, but I would make sure that we know. Um, Sammy stays around Popo at her home in Minnesota. It just seems to sit weird Popo is grandmother. Sammy loves to spend time with Popo, helping her garden and cook. One day, Dev Davy, a friend in the neighborhood, comes over to play at Popo's house. The garden he points to a small melon and asks, What is it, a cucumber or a zucchini? Um, I don't even know if you have to say what is it. I think that's implied in, is it a cucumber or a zucchini? This is a winter melon. In Chinese, it's called Dong Kwa, says Sammy. Davy smiles. Dong Kwa, he repeats. I've never eaten winter melon before, he says as they stand over the garden. Popo told me that when she lived in China, winter melon was one of the few vegetables to eat. You could, you could admit to eat in winter. Maybe that's just like because of scarcity or... I think if the kids, because I remember if I remember this correctly, the kids are kind of tempted to steal the winter melon and end up doing it. So then I would almost say it was one of the few vegetables you could you could only eat in winter, just because you know it kind of gives it that sense of mystique as opposed to like, hey, we were starving and all we have was winter winter melon. Personal preference, but I think it's just open. Um, that is why the melon is named winter melon. It can be stored for 12 months. Popo grows them here during the summer. Hmm. Can be stored here. I guess, yeah, I mean, I think for me, I think with children's books, it's always like, you kind of are like, that's why. It's a little bit more exp ex explanation, so that's okay. It's just um, maybe I'm not as used to reading children's books as I used to be. Um, it can be stored for 12 months. Popo grows them here during the summer. I want to make Willow Melon Soup now. But Popo says, I have to have the patience. Uh, okay, good. So this is a great setup of a goal. So I see that this kid... Po uh, um, I would, I mean, I guess I would also think about kind of putting another dialogue tag in here because it's kind of, I, I think I know it's Sammy, but it kind of, I uh, want to make sure. I would like almost make this statement um, kind of like a confiding in Davy. So being like, like, you know, Sammy leaned over to Davy and said, I want to make winter melon now but popo is not letting me so i would almost kind of have that co-conspirator uh moment and that can also get you a dialogue tag in there which is not a bad thing um maybe Popo says, I have to have, Popo says, to have the patience, have to have, uh, verb, uh, just random choice, style choice there, patience for the right time. I have to have the patience to wait for the mill, patience for the right time in the mill. That's a bit funny wording. I just have, I would just say, but Popo says to have the patience to wait for the winter melon to get big and ripe she says whoa sammy's grandmother is that a she 
Sammy is a she. Oh, I did not know Sammy was a girl. Interesting. I would, oh yeah, so yeah, this dialogue tag at the end is good, but I would consider using that one uh, in the middle. Yeah, I won't mark it out, but I would move the dialogue tag to the middle of that dialogue block, personally. That's just a style thing. Um, at the summer, Davy and Sammy visit the garden. Every day they ask Popo if the, all that summer, Daisy and Sammy visited the garden. Uh, visits the, visit the garden's fine. Every day, uh, still present tense, that's fine. Every day they ask Popo if the winter melon is ready. Well, I think to eat is implied. But each time, Popo tells them it's not, tells them to be patient. It's not time yet. Um, maybe it's... They wash them. And then this is, so you said, we already have Popo telling him it's not time yet. And this is another, it needs more time. So I would actually have this. It looks bigger now. Should we pick it today? Popo says it still needs more time. These are also just suggestions. A lot of this is actually really super solid. And these are just more kind of copy clarity things. It needed more, it needs more time. Maybe show, uh, maybe show Sammy getting patient here. Maybe he's like, well, Popo may not know it's warmer in California or whatever. Um, <laughs> and maybe that'll help. Because I, I, I really like, um, this is a great setup. We have that want. We have a, the conflict that that want is withheld from the character. Um, but I would have him uh, start to question the authority figure now. So his patience is going to start pushing uh, those buttons. I'm going to see if there's anybody commenting. Nobody yet. Um... Finally, in autumn, Popo tells them that they will wait. They they will wait one more week. They will have to wait one more week, or they will they will wait one more week before they will pick up the pick the winter melon from the garden. A week passes, and in the afternoon, Popo rests in her chair and falls asleep. I think it's time, Sammy says. Sammy tiptoes towards the garden. I think it's time, Sammy says. Sammy begins to tiptoe toward the garden, careful not to wake Popo. This is good. I would almost wonder, they're actually kind of obeying Popo. Maybe, maybe they do it a day early. This is a bit more of a moral choice. I think this is good because they're sneaking in really early in the morning and doing all this stuff. But I would almost say, I would kind of want it to just be a little bit on the edge, where they're like, mm, maybe we'll do it one day before. What is, how is that going to hurt? Uh, and then Popo rests in her chair and falls asleep. I think it's mine. Sammy says, Sammy begins to tiptoe towards the garden, careful not to wake Popo. Davy follows her with caution to Popo's words the week before. Davy tells her again to wait for Popo to see if the winter melons are white. Sammy doesn't listen. I would almost show and not tell this moment here. Um, so this is like a really good moment you have. So I think you almost want to bring this into the scene instead of, uh, you know, do it through narrative summary, which is kind of like, hey, they told him not to. Um, I'd have a dialogue uh, chain here. Oh, wait, no. Let me edit this. And then that would be like... Davy said, Sammy, don't... 
We shouldn't be up this early. Popo may think it needs more time than Sammy. Popo always. <laughs> You know, whatever. That's like a bad example, and I'm sure your dialogue's much better than mine. But yeah, that would be kind of the way to visualize that conflict happening, but then also uh, the more you can bring it into the, that conflict into the scene where they're disagreeing and there's kind of this moral decision both of them are making together, the more you can bring that into a scene where um, we're kind of following along, um, that kind of brings the drama out a lot more of a really good moment you, you already are uh, bringing up. Sammy does not listen. She dusts the dirt off the melon, picks it up from the vine, and pushes the melon inside. Sammy rolls a miller melon with all with such strength. Maybe they're going fast so they don't get caught. That's a, just a thought. Um, that one I probably am not as, you know. But I would link, uh, like the, the reason I brought that note up is I would link the, uh, the kind of the catastrophe with the flaw, which is like, you know, she's like, Sammy's like a, like totally strong. Well, that's awesome. And then the melon falls. But I would almost want that to be linked with um, they're trying to avoid suspicion and knowing they made a bad moral choice, they're going fast and then it goes out of control. Uh, but that kind of is already implied, but yeah, I don't know. Sammy now knows that it was not the time. She wishes she had listened to Davy and waited for Popo. Both of their heads hang from their shoulders. Both of their heads hang. Yeah, I think that's a uh, verb. Agreement. Hang from their shoulders. Sammy... Sammy stares at the pieces shattered below. Popo wakes up from all the noise. Aya! Popo says in shock. Sammy and Davy know they can't not they cannot grow another winter melon, I would be specific. Uh, before dinner. All that summer they'd waited for this one. Now there's no winter melon to make winter melon soup. But Popo in her patience months ago great callback had tucked away another winter melon in storage from the last harvest she carries the winter melon into the kitchen sammy and davy look at popo in awe popo wipes the tears from their faces the two children were surprised that coco I would, I, I would almost show this, because yeah, we kind of would guess, um, because, uh, like, we can assume, like, we can usually get that surprise feeling from, like, an action, like, their eyes widened, or something like that. Show this emotion. Yeah, and they're, those are, a, usually those are a few small notes, just like a few show-don't-tell moments. Um, but yeah, that that would be like a great way, because like, you know, we're already in the scene, um, and you know, the way I envision someone surprised may be like eyes widening, but the way someone else envisions someone surprised is like a jaw dropping. So that kind of brings ambiguity into the scene, so you want to describe what's happening, and then someone will take out that, that um, abstract of like they're surprised from the concrete like oh the wise wide whatever that popo had another winter melon they can make winter melon soup after all so this is ingredients spread across two pages oh nice okay i love the recipe insert i think it's a phenomenal idea and this and this time with all the ingredients including patience oh 
Well done. Well done. I like it. I love the theme. Sammy and Davy wait as the soup simmers. At last. Oh, great. I like this because it seems that they've learned. And I would almost... Uh, I mean, it's already pretty well highlighted, but I'm... I don't know. I think, yeah, this is a great moment. Um, you know, I think it's already in the forefront. Maybe in the pictures we have them waiting patiently like they should have. I think this is a really good moment. So I like this uh, moment a lot because it means that they've learned and they are waiting now and they're being patient. Dude, this is way, this is really, really strong in this draft. At last, Sammy and Davy and Popo each slurp down their bowls of winter melon soup. Man, I mean, I really think, uh, I'm just going to kind of do overall, uh, and this is the good. Um, I mean, I think the theme is on point. Really sharp and clear, and we see that character change. Um... I like the characters. I think, you know, the illustrations I think will help as they always do and stuff like this. I would just do, um, yeah, I like the characters. I like the framing. Um, improve. Um, I would just do a bit like your your show don't tell there are a few moments where we're told something happened I'd avoid jumping out of the scene into narrative summary unless there are no other options um the other thing i really like that um yeah i think gosh this is so much this is really really a strong draft um my one thing was i would almost do um for the morning sneak for the winter melon I'd almost consider day before because clearer moral distinction or highlight or at least high excuse me or at least highlight that harder in the dialogue. Let me see if anybody's commented. Nope. Um okay. Um yeah, I think this is a really strong draft. My one thing, with just one recommendation I have would be to, to grab um, someone else and just do uh, phrasing uh, and like sentence structure pass. So making, you know, I think it was, this was pretty good. Like everything was, all the tensing was super solid. Everything was in um, present. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I always make myself do this is just to say how do i make this punchier how do i you know make the dialogue balance like i think we had one up here where kind of a long block of dialogue without the and the tag was at the very end so those are things that i would think about doing a um just doing a final pass uh, editing pass for and language sharpening I mean, I think your style and a lot of the choices you've already made are really good. Um, but I'm like, you know, I I mean, I, I think you have a really great story here. And I would just kind of say, hey, you know, spend an extra, you know, few hours or grab a few extra people to just like say, hey, how do I just make every single paragraph punchy? Because, um, you know, children's books are so short. They're pretty much like poetry. Like they have to be that precise. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think this was a phenomenal uh improvement from from um the previous draft i think this is like 
really, really like super solid. Um, so yeah, well done for one. And uh, yeah, I'm excited if uh, if you send another draft, I would be happy to read it. It's kind of awesome to see how much this has improved. And I think you made some some tough cutting choices. I see there's not as many kids in this one trimming down the characters. I think that was the right call. Um, you know, you have to keep it simple. I think trimming down the number of kids was the right decision. I mean, and you can just see how much the clarity and like the sharpness and like the character change has like evolved. Um, so great job. I think you made, I mean, those are like, you know, it's like killing your darlings, right? Like, and that's something I struggle with is like, how do you cut out the stuff that you like really like, but I think you did a phenomenal job. So great job. Keep up the good work. And, uh, yeah, that's all I got for today.